So what what advice do you have about marriage? Like what makes a good marriage? This men say I do. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your mouth shut when you want to talk. I think just always thinking the other person first, trying to think of them before yourself and be considerate. Like, when my kids were little, I used to think they're little angel guests in my home, and I want them, them to feel like they are special, and I love them. And I, I just remember having these sweet little kids around, and I thought, just love having these sweet little angel kids come to live with us for a while, because I knew it wasn't permanent. <laughs> They'd all grow up and leave. <laughs> you really thought that about Charles? <laughs> I'm talking about a baby. <laughs> Bro, Charles. Let me tell you about Charles. <laughs> tell us about Charles. I lived with it, but these people have not heard about Charles. Charles was curious. And... We decided to change our garage into a family room. And so Ron left his tools out. Uh oh. And Charles got the screwdriver. And next thing you know, I hear a clunk on the floor in the in the living room. And it's the front doorknob. He'd taken the whole doorknob off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he's never then, stopped. <laughs> I thought, oh, Charles playing the piano, but he's using his fist. I go out there, it's a hammer. He broken every key. every key on my piano. <laughs> Except one. I think there's one. Teresa can yeah, show I'll check you. it, Teresa's. <laughs> and then one day I thought, uh oh, he's being really quiet. I better go figure out where he is. He was in the bathroom. He'd taken the hinges off the door and it's about to fall on him. Oh my gosh. And I'm saying, Charles, go get in the bathtub because if it falls, it will hit you. <laughs> I remember he drew all over the walls with your lipstick. Yep, he did that. And on the shelves in the mm -hmm. linen closet. Uh, then, let's see. The one I got really ticked about was Keith was just a brand new little baby. I guess he was probably six months old. He was sitting up. And I put him in the family room, and for some reason I didn't get to say my prayers that morning. So I said, okay, the kids are playing pretty good in the family room. I'll run back to my bedroom and have my prayers. I come back, and a whole tub of, you can't believe it's butter, was all over Keith's head, all over his face. <laughs> there wasn't any left. It was a brand new tub. <laughs> and Keith's sitting there blinking, and he had long black eyelashes. And he could hardly, and he saw me, and he goes, <laughs> and I, was sure. I said, Heavenly Father, I was praying you should have been watching him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was Charles. Oh, yeah, he would run out in the street naked, and all the kids in the neighborhood would sit around watching him, laughing, and you'd make Teresa or I run out and get him, so he'd come back. Yeah. It was very and embarrassing. I hated it. Then we had this big swing set, and he would climb to the very top and stand up on it. And I'm going, I can't walk. 
watch. I can't watch. He's going to phone kill himself, and I can't see it. <laughs> and I turn around, and he is down. <laughs> now, what about the cows? Yeah, the cows. So I put him out in the backyard, and I was working in the kitchen, and I heard this bang, 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 bang on the back door. And this lady said, is this son yours? And I said, yes. Well, let me tell you what he just did. <laughs> You're not taking very good care of him. And I says, he's only been out there 10 or 15 minutes. She says, well, in that 10 or 15 minutes, he climbed through the barbed wire fence, went over, opened the gate to our corral, and 20 head of cattle are out on the main road in Citrus Heights. <laughs> And I had to go chase the cattle, and then I had to come get him and bring him to you. Now, I wish you'd take care of your kid. <laughs> was this the grandma? No. It was, it was, uh, it was Yvette and Yvonne's mom? Mm -hmm. What's yes. She was probably in her 30s. Yeah. Not happy with me. <laughs> yeah. So... So I'm pregnant with Keith. Keith any day, and my mother comes to help me with you kids, and he gets through the fence. And these cattle are big cattle. I mean, they're white-faced herds. I mean, they could have killed him. Yeah. <laughs> so he climbed through, and I'm standing there yelling, and I said, Charles, you get over this fence right now. And... He wouldn't, he wouldn't budge. So my mother go, next thing I know, I see my mother coming out the door with a popsicle. She says, Charles, do you want a popsicle? He says, yeah. He says, get over here. He cried right through the fence. And I go, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why they didn't turn on the fence. Because it was, it sometimes was charged. Yeah. And if they just kept it charged, he wouldn't have done it. I know. But, whatever. Yeah, that was... So you should probably talk about Teresa. Like, how she was as a kid, maybe. Since you talk about Charles as a toddler. He was kind of crazy. Well, uh, we moved to Chico. And something happened because after he turned four and we moved to Chico, it was like... Except for the nails. The what? The nails. Oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, he didn't get into as much mischief. But he would get, he and Keith, they had those little bikes. Hot, uh, big wheels. Big wheels. And they'd run around underneath the tree, which was dirt. And we watered, so it was muddy. And then they'd go riding down the sidewalk, sidewalk into the neighbor lady's driveway. Who she hated kids and back down, and she'd come out and see all these muddy wheels <laughs> in her driveway and stand there and scream at us. <laughs> yeah, she was priceless. <laughs> Teresa, I don't remember anything about Teresa doing anything. No, like what was she like as a baby? And like, Teresa was sick. Um, she was allergic to the DPT shot when she was one year old. Uh, but I'll back up. When we moved to from Nevada to Sacra, Citrus Heights, she was very sick and she wouldn't drink anything. And so I thought she must have a bad sore throat if she won't drink anything. And I called the doctor and she said, better bring, bring her in just in case she's getting dehydrated. Well, got her in there and she was dehydrated. They said, we better put her in the hospital. We're gonna have to put IVs in her. And so they did. And they tested her and she had a virus. So they thought she had spinal meningitis. And she was running a high fever by then. And 
So they tied her down. Her hands and her feet and legs were all tied down. Why? Because she was thrashing around and she'd take out the IVs that were in her mm. forehead and that. So I, when I went to visit her, I could, I had to dress up like a doctor and go in there and uh, I'd put my head on her little chest and sing, I am a child of God. All the primary songs I could think of. <laughs> and she would quiet down enough that she wouldn't cry so much. And that was hard on me. I went home and Mavis had come and she was there with you when I got there. And I was lying on the couch and I had a tear roll out of my eye. So she called Ron and told him that I wasn't fit, a fit mother, I shouldn't have any more children, and that I should, uh, that was it. Anyway, so he told me that I don't think we should have any more children. My mother thinks you're not a fit mother because she saw you crying, and I said, I had a tear run that down my cheek. And I tried to explain to him what it was like in the hospital to go in there and see your child all hooked up, tied down and crying. And she was uh, about, her birthday's in January, this is September, so she's about nine months old. And so I went, like on the third or fourth day I went in and they said, well, uh, you can, you can take her out, we've taken the thing off and you can hold her. And, and so I picked her up and I was rocking her and then I put her, went to put her down in the crib and I saw she's covered with measles. She had roseola and instead of breaking out, it had gone to her throat and broken out and that's why she wouldn't drink anything because it was extremely sore. So that was at nine months. Then at one year, she had the DPT shot. And on the way home from the doctor, she just started screaming and screaming and, I mean, screaming. And uh, she finally, finally <coughs> after about two hours, we got home and she stopped screaming, but she just laid there in bed and when I went like this, there was no response. So oh I gosh. called the doctor and I said, it's like she's in a coma. And he says, yeah, she's allergic to it for some reason. So it, he says it's like one in 100,000 right. that happens to, and she's one of them. And he says, in 24 hours, she'll come out of the coma and she'll be fine. And sure enough, 24 hours later, she started walking. Oh she was fine. Gosh. So that was... Stressful. But she was, uh, even as a child, she was right on time. Oh, when I was carrying Teresa, I knew I prayed to Heavenly Father. Tell me, because Rochelle was so amazing. I thought, I got to know what Teresa's like or what this little person's like. Because we didn't know it was boy or girl. Um, and... So when she was about, oh, seven months, when I was about seven months along, she started being kind of angled in my body and her feet were up here and she broke two or three of my ribs going like this constantly, just constantly. <laughs> and I thought, well, after she's born, it won't hurt. No, it took about another six months before those healed. <laughs> so I knew she was a very determined little baby <laughs> and when she was born they put her on the to be weighed and she reached up and got a hold of the bar that went across that has the thing on the it the weights yeah and she held that and so they couldn't get a weight and they were all flustered by her and <laughs> oh, she was strong Strong person, personality. I said, if I keep her on the right road, she'll be amazing. If she ever gets off, it'll be hard to get her back on. <laughs> so.
So, uh, uh, but she, when she got older, she'd go to sleep at 7.30 at night and wake up at 7.30 in the morning. Unlike Rochelle, who, if Ron and I were talking out in the front room, what are you guys talking about? She comes out. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I said, you're supposed to be asleep. It's after 9 o'clock. I could hear you talking. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I'm just a super curious person. Yeah. She and Charles. Anyway. But I didn't ruin stuff. <laughs> no. So, anyway, Teresa had, she was not the healthiest. And then she got styes. Right. And when she's about four years old, she started getting them every two weeks. And I'd have to take her in the doctor and he'd give her an antibody to get rid of them. I said, tell me what's causing the styes. And he says, I don't know. They don't teach just that in medical school. So I got a Dell Davis book and she's a biochemist and she said it's a lack of vitamin A and to yep. the best vitamin A is called the Royal. Yeah. And you can't believe she and Rochelle would ask for it. Oh mom you didn't give us our vitamin A. So I'd give them their vitamin A every night. It's true. I can't imagine <laughs> mom wanting to do vitamins. Yeah, yeah can't right? <laughs> Yeah, but she never had another sty after that either. Yeah, I remember that too. Her last sty she got, her head was in, her whole head was infected, and the doctor said, "You know, this could go to her brain and damage her brain." And I, oh my gosh, you think he would figure it out? <clears throat> I told him. Really? I'm an a. Did you tell him after you found yeah, out? It was like. Crazy. So that was, oh, and then, backing up to when I was nursing her, I didn't know that she was <clears throat> allergic to milk. So I would drink milk, powdered milk, and she'd scream and holler and have diarrhea. So I knew she was allergic to my milk, but I didn't know why. And so I took her to the pediatrician in... Carson City, which had a brand new pediatrician that just get, got out of school. He says, well, you better give her jello water. She has to have something getting into her system. So she had jello water until we moved to Sacramento, and I took her to the pediatrician, and he said, well, put her on soy milk. She, and then when she's a year old, she'll be okay. And then that worked out fine. So um, then I found out that whatever a mother eats or drinks, if the baby can't tolerate it, then they get sick, terrible colic and diarrhea. So that's why autumn, something Megan's eating is causing her to have a little bit of diarrhea. Right. So a friend of mine wife had couldn't have lettuce her baby was allergic to lettuce so you never know crazy so Teresa had a hard beginning <laughs> beginning right from the get-go it was I was so angry because it was a brand new hospital and I went in to see her and she was they had her laying on her stomach face down, and there was a pool of mucus like this. And she was lifting herself up, doing push-ups. To get her head, head out. Back and forth like this, so she didn't lay in it. So I called the doctor and I said, let me out of here, I gotta take my baby home. I said, the nurses aren't even watching her. They're in another room, they don't care. Two cents about what's going on with her. So I got to come home in the middle of the night, and so she had congestion, and that's when the doctor said, put a shirt over the crib, 
I didn't have a bassinet. I just had a small crib and and uh, with air, humidifier, and so that's how I took care of her for the next week or two. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I had a hard time trying to keep up with her uh, illnesses and whatever. When she turned four, it was, she should have been in kindergarten because she was a pretty sharp little girl, but, and she was bored to death. So I started teaching her about things at home, home teaching her. And uh, so she was, by the time she was in second grade, she was going to be a teacher and she knew she was and she loved Miss Sweet. And she became a teacher, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Teresa was the one who would, I'd, get, I'd put her clothes in her drawer and she would refold them and stack them perfectly in her drawer. <laughs> and she always put her bed back together, put her pillow up, and, and she like this just so. And uh, sometimes Ron had to go to activities where uh, I was supposed to go, but I had to stay home with whatever was going on. And he would take Teresa with him. She was probably eight or nine then. And uh, perfect, you know, set perfectly. And <laughs> I remember one time I went to a shower and they'd have these glass little trays with a glass of punch on it. And I thought, how, how do you even eat? Trying to balance this thing, drink from this cup, and eat your little sandwich, whatever. Right. And I spilled my drink. Teresa's sitting there, drinking properly, doesn't spill a thing. <laughs> I thought, how come I'm the mother and she's the daughter? <laughs> but anyway, that was... That was about it. She loved to play soccer and she loved to play basketball, but not church because. The well, we had some bad experiences with church ball. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> it was not fun. Other than that, someone, she was in the road show and she enjoyed that, I think. Oh, yeah, her and Lisa got a nominated. For yeah. best actresses, because they were so funny as the fairies, Glenda and who's the bad witch's name? Because she was Glenda. Yeah, and she they were super funny. I I was I was one of the daughter. No, I was the lion in that. And then we the other one we did. I was. Come on, the daughter. Family. So, Gwen has a 